pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Go ahead and approve a motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Sean, you call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Jibben? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Let me go. We have our claims and reports are in your share file. Um, if everybody's had a chance to look at those. And then moving on to the consent agenda, we'll consider a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Sean, you call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Jibben? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Then we have an opportunity for public comment for items not on the agenda. Is there anybody in the public that would like to make a comment? Go ahead and state your name and address. David Tauntlin, 28947, 474th Avenue, Beersha, South Dakota. I'm here to uh, address you folks on you want to buy, purchase a new track skid loader, a second one for the county shop. Uh, you can lease one for four weeks for $2,595 from rent all and, and such. It's being a to horse. Um, year too old, next to new or whatever. If you have, uh, if there's a breakdown, they swap out right away and they come down and they service it. When it needs to be oil changed, greased, whatever, every 250 hours. Um, that'd be a four week period for $2,595. And I think that's a good buy instead of, or financially, um, responsible instead of purchasing one that uh, you don't have use for it all 12 months a year. You could use it for uh, four weeks, eight weeks, whatever you have to need for uh, you know dirt removal in the early spring when you want to get ready for culverts, bridges, and that type of stuff. So consider this. Uh, it's a good deal, and uh, that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Rumba. John Rumbo, building superintendent. Uh, I had told Sean I had a third item to put on the agenda, but I couldn't think uh, of it. What it uh, it is uh, what just an update on the meeting room for last night. Sorry, John. I'll uh, fill you guys in later. Yeah, I think you could <laughs> reach good. us personally and I could do it that way. Anybody else want to say anything for public comment? All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to regular business. Can the commissioners have a comment? <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair? That depends. I maybe you should vet it first. <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> sure. <laughs> couple of things that I just wanted to draw your attention to. If people got their tax notices, I was impressed that we have finally put on your tax notice all kinds of important information as to where you can call, what, what your real estate taxes are all about, your filing deadline, pertinent information. And I'd just like to congratulate our treasurer uh, for putting that out because I think it answers some of the questions that taxpayers have. And then under complete trivia, Madam Chair, you're shaking your head. <laughs> I found that one of the technologies that are coming our way are to give drone, how well your county or your state is ready for drones. And what they mean is they have to have certain areas in which drones can fly for delivery purposes if you're Amazon or whatever company you are and you want to deliver, 
that you just can't fly helter-skelter across anymore. They are looking at creating these fly zones, and counties would have to give permission on their county roads to use those as flyways. So in preparing for this drone technology, our neighbor to the north, North Dakota, is number one. They've already done this. And their neighbor to the south, South Dakota, we rank number 43 in preparedness. But don't despair. Iowa is 45, and Nebraska is 44. So there is some consistency here amongst the three of us. And I'm sure all of you wanted to know that, but you did hear it here first. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Schmidt. I don't know how I would have survived without the information today. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and move on to regular business. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Becky? <laughs> Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm just here today. I'm informing the board that I'll be resigning my position as a registered deeds effective April 2nd, 2021. I'll be retiring and moving to Custer, South Dakota. It has been a great honor and my pleasure to serve the citizens of Lincoln County these past 17 years. I wish to thank the board for the support over the years, and you have my full commitment to ensure the transition to the next registered deeds. Sincerely, Becky. Thank you, Becky. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Well, Becky, I think we owe you a great deal of appreciation for your dedication and all the things that you've transferred to. I think you're one of the few departments that talk about money that you actually bring in for your services. So. Yeah, this, this is, 2020 was a record year for us. For the amount of revenue that was generated? And. Uh, um, Madam Chair, is it appropriate that we must take action on accepting her resignation? I believe so, yes. So um, I would entertain a motion. Unfortunately, I will offer that acceptance of her resignation. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Sean, we call the roll, please. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Thanks for your service, Becky. Thank you. Number two, we have a resignation in the sheriff's office. Julia, are you teeing that up? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, first would be to accept the resignation of Ashley Landon, deputy sheriff, effective the 28th of January, 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. Madam Second. Chair. Thank you. Any discussion? Sean, will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Uh, next, a promotion in the highway department, one of two. Uh, the first is to promote Sonny Larson from light equipment operator to heavy equipment operator in the highway department at 2049 per hour, effective the 24th of January. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. Becky? Second. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Sean, you go ahead and call the roll, please. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Uh, next is to promote Waylon Wellman from a heavy equipment operator to a heavy equipment specialist in the highway department at 2607 per hour, effective the 17th of January. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Sean? Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Uh, next item is um, for mandatory anti-harassment and anti-discrimination training. Uh, the commission expressed interest to move forward with this training at the end of last year. This is more just a touch, I just wanna touch base with you that you're still supportive of that before I make that purchase. It is under $5,000. Um, it's roughly about $2,800 for um, each year for a three-year contract. The contract has been reviewed for legal, so if I have your support still, I'll just move forward with that. Is that is that in-person training or is it con video or how does it work? Um, it's online. It's very similar to what IT put out, how there's automatic trainings and it gives reminders um, and then it updates the department head on who's done it and who hasn't. Okay. You've heard the request. Do we wanna continue with that? 
I would so I move if you're looking for an I official action. I don't know if we need a, an official action. Okay. But you're supportive of moving forward. You're not hearing yes. any dissension. Oh, I'm sorry, what? You're not hearing any dissension. Okay, so. great. I'll move forward. Thank Thanks. you. Um, and then lastly um, would be to discuss the recruitment strategy for the Register of Deeds position. Um, if you'd like to do something <laughs> similar to what we did um, for the auditor, we could open it up for roughly a month time frame. Um, and then that, by doing that, I've talked to Becky, and she thinks it's appropriate to have roughly about a week or two overlap, and that would provide that. Julia, given the fact that we probably established precedent in as when we replaced the auditor, I think it's only appropriate that we follow the same procedure in replacing the Register of Deeds. Okay. Is that your motion? That would be my motion. I'll second that motion. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any Madam further? Chairman. Yeah, Any further go discussion? Go ahead. I, I guess I, what was that uh, procedure that you did with the auditor? The one we aver tell them about we advertise it for a month yeah. to the public. Yep, we opened it externally for um, all applicants that are I interested in the position to apply. Um, so it's open for a month, and then la last time we used the approach to um, advertise in the four local newspapers, Kelloland, and then also the county association websites. And then our website of two, of course. And so they'd be pointed into the position, and then um, they'd have to rerun in the end of 2022. Correct? Uh, right. We interviewed. We interviewed. We looked at the top candidates that were from the position, and we interviewed. Uh, I don't four, three or four of them. I think Commissioner Landine and myself did that. We interviewed. I think four people, and then from those four, we selected the top two. They came in and interviewed with the commission. And then the commission voted on which one that they wanted. So that Thank was you. kind of the procedure. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Sean, will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. And then to your point, Commissioner Schmidt, we did have two liaison commissioners for that recruitment process. Would you like to do the same for this one? I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And who would you like that to be? I'll volunteer if you're looking for volunteers. I can volunteer for it as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Sean, you've got number seven. Yes. So at a previous meeting, um, David Gillespie discussed the Sioux Valley Regional Railroad Authority. And uh, I placed it on this agenda to make an appointment for that. In that meantime, Commissioner Gibbon informed me that he was willing to volunteer. So I would let you speak to that if you would like. Yes, I, I spoke with uh, Commissioner Gillespie and, and uh, former Commissioner Gillespie and, and uh, about his uh, concern about filling that position by a commissioner. and. I uh, said that I'd be uh, more than willing to uh, step in and do that uh, with the consent of this commission. With that, I'll, uh, I'll move. move. Uh, I'll, I'll move for I'll second. his approval. And appoint, uh, appoint Commissioner Gibbon to fill the Sioux Valley Regional Rareport Railroad Authority position. And that's your second, Mike? That's my second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Sean, may you call the roll, please? Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. And then? Um, Mark Isaacson is here to oh. discuss the airport beacon. Okay, great. Mark? Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we had a uh, little incident with it uh, about three weeks ago with a rotating beacon. It's a big high pole. It's flashing uh, red and green. Uh, we we're trying to replace one of the lights up there and a rope broke. It's on a pivot system where you release the rope and it, and it comes down. You can get you can service the, the light. Well, a little probably a little higher wind than we should have done it with, but uh, that was beside the point because the rope broke and it came down and smashed the beacon. So we have to get that replaced sooner than later. The money for this um, can come from the state fuel tax, so it won't cost 
it shouldn't cost you anything, you know, to do to do that. We have um, we had one bid that was sent around that was pretty high, and Jordan called and says, "Well, we uh, and this was for a new um, a new uh, beacon." And I think this is on it. This was uh, this is to replace a few things with a more upgraded system. And then he says, "Well, come back. That's a little bit expensive." And this is the uh, this is the revised version on it. So this is a little bit better, and this is um, just to replace the, the current thing with what we have right now. Now that being said, in a couple of years when we do the ramp at the, um, at the airport, I think Helms is gonna put in for replacing the pole on there too. So, but in the meantime, we have to get this, uh, we have to get this fixed right away, and so we're just looking for the okay to do it. Uh, we're, we still have to work out with Sean or the, uh, the people who the money goes to from the state. If it comes to the, uh, the county here first and then we pay the contractor, or if, um, if it goes from the state directly to the contractor, we'll work out those details too. But I guess that's it. If there's questions, any questions, I'll try yeah. to answer. Any questions from the commission? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, question, does the first bid include the poll and the other requirements that we're gonna end up probably changing in the future anyway? No. It doesn't, so no, then. it's just replacing the, the light assembly that. Uh, that the $10,000 bid, that one, the one that you one showed didn't either. either. That one didn't either. That was okay. just for the new uh, fancier light system. Okay. If anybody was up there, I think I drove up there and it is, it's pretty well smashed out. I think, Commissioner Jibben, you were up there as well, weren't you? Yes, yes. Uh, and thank you again for taking time to show me that yesterday and sure. what was involved. And uh, yeah, there's not much left of it. So uh, I uh, concur with Commissioner Schmidt. There definitely is need to do something at this time. When you say the state fuel tax pay for, pays for it, how does that work? Well, we have a uh, I think there's a flow fee or something that accumulates over time. I think we have over 12,000 in it right now. And that's used for airport improvements and for, for different things that happen like, like this. Right, so. and so that's specific to the airport in T? Yes. Okay. Yeah, for the fuel that we sell there. Right, okay. We've heard the request. Is there a motion to approve the low bid? I'll show Second. Second move, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Sean, you call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Jibben? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Thanks, Mark. Good thing. Thank you. Mr. Rombo. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> now you can come talk to us. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first one on my list is the, as you know, during the budget process, we, uh, the few of the commissioners opted to drop the coffee, um, contract with A&B business products, but, uh, allowed us to keep the filtered water systems. So, uh, this is the new, um, uh, contract for fiscal year 2021. Um, and Madam Chair, I don't, your shared file, if you want me to pull it up. I would move that we authorize you to sign the contract. Thank you. Is there a second? Is the cost the same? Yes, so this particular year, the costs will stay the same as they were in previous years. Second that. Thank you. You know, when we did this, I think there were some benefits to keeping that in place for the pipes and everything else, wasn't yeah. there? Well, it's just uh, the water's pretty, uh, strong here and there's a lot of people that just choose even I, I filter the water fountains which to me is drinkable and but uh some people would prefer to have it filtered a little better to drink it and it's they are heavily used i will say it's it's the units are very very much so used there's three um, units so. all uh, right madam chair yes um, wasn't this a compromise uh, commissioner schmidt in our budget that coffee was eliminated but the water would be kept correct that's correct all right. Yes. Thank you. So there's been a first and a second to approve the contract or authorize me to sign that. Um, any further discussion? Sean, you call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Jibben? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. 
Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landin? Yes. So the next item is uh, what I brought to the commission a couple weeks ago about uh, uh, the subcontractor underneath XL Energy wanting to store light poles on one of our facilities. I've met with them. I've uh, agreed that I, I thought it was a good place to have it stored on the north side of the building at the Lennox 4-H building and event center. And uh, they came back with a price of, of leasing the ground for that period of time for $600 a month. Um, I believe Commissioner Schmidt uh, uh, had said that he'd like to see that money at some point flow back towards the 4-H buildings and the 4-H needs over there. So uh, that's where we're at. The uh, there's agreement to be signed uh, for that amount. Um, I did have a conversation with them about putting up poles for future needs for us. They're more than willing to look at that at that time, but they might need to subtract that out of the payment they're making to us. So I don't know if it's worth their time to have them do it and not just XL at some point. But. John, how many months is this for? They're, they're saying it could go out to a year. Um, they go year round. Uh, they're hoping they could be done in six to nine months. But um, um, the last I knew they were gonna try to get stationed quickly and get running on this side of the county first. So that will probably make them get them out of there faster but. and this money would go to the the rental money would go into the general fund and then go to the 4-h uh, department yes okay uh, well commission what? may madam chair or commissioner, no, go ahead, commissioner. Uh, madam otter would have to correct me but i think initially it would go to the general fund and we'd take a second action to it will. move it over to any the, any rental money but it would go to the, to the general, general fund. fund and it will be then the will of the commission to put that money put towards it to for it. Use. Madam Chair, I would move that uh, we uh, sign the um, temporary our facility lease for the storage of poles on our 4-H ground. Thank Second. You. Thank Madam you. Chair, do you have a question? Yep, go ahead. Go Thank ahead. you. <laughs> John, does the contract discuss if there's any damages to the ground, but with their on and off that they'll repair the ground yes, to? Yes, I believe it does. All right. And we can back out of the contract, I think, within 30 days notice, you know. If we All right. need it, if it's just not working, we need Thank to you. Like Any other questions or discussion? Yeah, just Madam Chair, just to Commissioner Poppins' point, paragraph seven of the lease, uh, I think, is what paragraph seven and eight covers, uh, I think, your concerns. Oh, thank you. I didn't have a chance to read that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Sean, you call the roll, please? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landin. Yes. Mr. Golden. May I remove my mask in order to be heard? Please. Uh, I will be short on this. On number 11, uh, there is a request by T for a temporary easement. It would be 100 feet. It might last up to two years. Uh, to the front of the property to store equipment and other constructions along the road along the property that they're talking about south of T, the new property that was purchased down there. Um, so that is what's up before you now, whether or not you want to grant them that easement so they can do the road work, store their equipment, um, and work from that location. Any questions? I would move to grant them the lease, or the easements, excuse me. Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. Thank you. I think that um, <clears throat> to uh, Commissioner Gibbons' credit, pose the question that some of this uh, land is uh, farmable, and was there uh, a tenant that had farmed it last year and was given proper notification. And I personally checked on that and I found out there wasn't and that um, an individual come forward and volunteered their uh, services and did put a uh, crop in at their expense and harvested it at their expense and that all of the proceeds uh, went to a charity in Parker, which is a home for boys uh, that uh, are in need of some special love and attention. 
so that there is no uh, problem with leasing this or giving this lease because there is nobody that really rents that particular land at all. So um, we can give this easement without any complication. Thank you. So we've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Sean, call the roll, please. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Uh, number 12, there had been numerous inquiries about our sign ordinance. And on upon review, um, there is a case cited there that specifically addresses temporary signage um, from the Supreme Court. And it would be my recommendation that we look at our ordinance in view of Reed versus the town, um, town of Gilbert, Arizona, and potentially revise it based on that decision. So that would be my recommendation for the signed ordinance at this time. And then um, that kind of goes hand in hand with number item 13, correct? Yes. And so you have prepared a amended ordinance that needs to be referred to the planning commission? Uh, I spoke with um, Toby on this and it's going to take some time to figure out exactly how to do it because it may require a complete rewriting of the entire sign ordinance. We're hoping that we can avoid that and maybe just subtract some language. But right now, for political signs, it is an exemption from the sign ordinance. So we specifically outline a different category for political speech, and then we assign limitations to it. And so I think under the Gilbert decision, we need to carefully look at that and see if there's something else we need to do, which is, you know, legal terms, content neutral, meaning that we can't identify typical, a certain type of speech and then put limitations on it or other conditions that we don't put on all speech. Thank you. So uh, as far as number 12, is you're just, that's informational only? Yes, it just asking for it to read. I believe that um, Commissioner Aarons and myself were on there for this and uh, the recommendation from Toby was to send it back to planning and zoning for them to review the entire ordinance and see how much rewriting of the ordinance is necessary. Okay. So I'd work with them on that. The current sign ordinance uh, creates a specific exemption for political signs. And that was passed in 2009. This court case arose in 2015. I don't know why, uh, I have my guess as to why in 2009 political signs were exempted. It seems to be kind of a common thing around the country to want to tell people they have to take their political signs down a certain number of days after the election is over. Uh, Supreme Court has weighed in and said you can't treat political signs, you can't discriminate on the basis of what a sign says. You have to treat all signs equally. Uh, and you can't uh, say, well, since this sign says go vote for uh, so-and-so, uh, can't make people take it down five days after the fact. So do you make an motion, Commissioner Aarons? Well, my, my motion specifically was to at initially was to uh, just strike out the political sign language. And that is the recommendation I would send to planning and zoning. I had some discussions offline uh, and was informed that when we want to make these kinds of changes, it has to come in the form of an ordinance change or an amendment. And then also apparently according to state law, we're required to route that through planning and zoning. Is that correct? That yeah. is correct. So in this instance here, we, you know, we can send the whole thing, the recommendation to revise and amend to planning and zoning. They'll come back with whatever they come back with. Um, I'll just say that my intent is just to want to strike down the unconstitutional provision and not at this time to perform a wholesale rewrite of the code. But 
if the Planning and Zoning Commission wants to take a look at that, so be it. So, so that that's my motion. To refer it to the Planning Commission for recommendation? Yes. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Madam Chair, <clears throat> I have a question uh, just for information purposes. Commissioner Aarons or, or Bill, if, if the city, like the city of Sioux Falls, I think, has an ordinance that um, you got to remove all political signs in five days. Maybe I, I think that's my, what I was always told because I used to volunteer with somebody that would have their signs up and then right after the election you'd hustle to get them down. So does this mean, uh, Commissioner Aarons, that, that, their, that their ordinance is in violation of what the Supreme Court decided? I mean, I'm just asking a question. I'm I haven't reviewed the Sioux Falls ordinance, so I can't speak specifically to that. But what I can tell you is that Justice Thomas's uh, majority opinion in Reed versus Gilbert is very plain and clear. And it states you can't discriminate uh, on a sign uh, based upon what the sign says. So um, personally, I have a lot of heartburn with regard to the Sioux Falls ordinance. I understand why they want to clean those signs up, but freedom of speech is more powerful than somebody's uh, need to want to not have to see a political sign uh, in somebody's yard 30 days after the election. So I would encourage the city of Sioux Falls to come into compliance with the U.S. Constitution. I mean, I don't have any heartburn if, if, if you or myself or anybody wants to keep their particular sign in their property. Uh, I don't know. I, they probably have a right to do it. It's their property. I, the way our ordinance is written, it allowed a temporary signage, and they put a time restriction on it because if reading it just plain and simple, saying that you can't put temporary signage up of any types, then would prevent political signs in the yards, which is a whole other set of problems. Yeah. So yeah, we so have I a. I think they were trying to strike the different the balance. Sure. So we have a first and second. Sean, may you call the roll, please? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Uh, Mr. Golden, we need an executive session, is that right? Why don't we do that? We have a couple of um, openings of sealed bids that don't start until 10.05, so we might as well do our executive session now. I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. What is the purpose of this executive session? Um, we'd be going in under uh, SDCL 125 2 sub 1 and sub 3. I'll incorporate that into my motion. Thank you. And I'll incorporate that into my second. Thank you. Sean, will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Thanks. Joel, can I get a second? Second. Thank you. John, you got a first and a second uh, for a motion to come out. Okay. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. So we're out of executive session, but we don't have anything on the agenda until our sealed bids are opened at 10.05, so we'll be in recess until 10.05. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'm going to trust that. So I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting back to order. Um, we've got some sealed bids. Sean, do you want to go through those, please? Yes, ma'am. So for the 1983 IHS tracked crawler loader, we have one bid from Steve Williams for $2,786. Thank you. Since there's one bid, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Sean, call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. So we have three bids for the dump trucks and two dump trucks. The 
first one. It's from Steve Williams for three thousand thirty or three thousand three hundred seventy-eight dollars. The next is from Russ Hazel for $6,250. And the last is from Jim or Robin Simmons for $4,500. The, the two dump trucks are identical. Right. They're, and these, the there is just one check for the dollar amount. So. Well, yeah, how do we know which one they, do but they want both? Or the, the dollar is for both? Um, I have this from the Simmons that says, would like to place a bid of $4,500 on one of the 2003 Sterling M8500 dump trucks. And which one then? There hasn't been any differentiation on them. Well, the Hazels, was that for both then? No, they said, he just said it's one of them. No, but I understand the 4500 but the 6250 was that for both? What's that one say, Sam? Uh, it doesn't have anything in here except for his address. Guess what? We're not going to be selling trucks today. Let, let's get back to these folks, and we got to clarify which one, you know, left or right, up or down. We need some I think clarity. we'll have to advertise them each truck separately if that's if they can't specify it for the Sterling. I that's my suggestion, but Mr. Golden, what's your suggestion? He's Yeah, I they don't distinguish, they just say a truck. And we have two. They should have the VIN numbers on them, shouldn't they? Uh, with that, I would move to reject all bids and re-advertise and advertise them independently. Second. Thank you. Sean, you call the roll, please. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. We have bids for some fill dirt at 1010 to open. So, so we sold, what, which, which one of the items did we sell? The Two. crawler. The crawler? Okay. Yes, you got the crawler, Steve. <laughs> Congratulations. Sean, did you get a two bids or just the one bid on the dirt? Just one. So I'm going to, Madam Chair, disclose that I will not be voting on this as it is my bid as instead of having the county pay for it, I figure I'll try to buy it and then be done with this. So I put that bid in. So. <laughs> it's 10 10. Sean, you want to go ahead and. Um, Open the crawling. bid for the field builder. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I got a single bid from Michael Poppins for five hundred one dollars for the fill dirt. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. To accept. I'll second it. Thank you. Sean, you call the roll, please. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. 
And now I will consider a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Sean? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. We're adjourned. <laughs>